Hi folks, Glyn here. I've got another Photoshop tutorial for you today and it's only a quick one, a very, very quick one, but it's going through something that I really do love playing around with in Photoshop and that's lighting effects. Now, I've just finished putting this tutorial together for a Practical Photoshop magazine and it's of this picture here that you can see in front of you of this band called Sprig and Mist. Now, this is the final picture. This is what the tutorial shows you how to kind of get to the end result of. Um, but the out of camera image was this one here and it was shot during uh, the middle of the day, a few months back now, where are we now? We're in January, so this was probably around about September, October time, I think. Bright midday sun. So the tutorial shows you how you can take it to this kind of late night, evening kind of shot with all these lights on. And it's these lights here that I want to show you how you can do in Photoshop. Now, I'm not going to show you how you can put this lamp light on because we can maybe do that in another tutorial, but that is really, really simple using the uh, lens, um, lens flare effect within Photoshop. But it's more a case of wanting to show you these reflections and all this light spill uh, that we've got on our subjects and on the carriage and on the floor as well, because it's those kind of things that can add to the picture and just make it just a little bit more realistic and give it that finishing touch. So let's just jump over to Photoshop and I'll show you exactly what I mean. Now here's obviously the, the end picture. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to just dive down to where we've just got, um, just where we haven't got any of the lighting on. So let's just go down to here. Now, this is where all the reflective, reflective light, all the light spill has all been added. Um, and I want to show you how we can do that now. So let's just turn off that light source there, the light that's hitting all our subjects. Now, we're going to have a blank layer. You would probably ordinarily think that as soon as you've got a bright light on your uh, carriage, you're going to paint in a bright light all over the areas you want the reflection to be, but that's not necessarily the case. So we're going to get a brush and we're going to go over to our foreground colour and let's just say we're going to choose, for argument's sake, we'll go for a bright yellow because it's kind of like a bright light and it's generally going to be a yellow colour. So we'll go for the yellow. And what you're going to do is you're going to, let's say we want to add it onto the this guy here because he's obviously quite, low, uh, quite close to this light source. So we'll paint a little bit on this guy and we'll just say where we can see the highlight areas where he was lit that's where the majority of this light will be hitting because it's naturally given us like an area to say like there's the light hitting him on those bright parts and we'll say here now one thing you're not going to do is paint it into these areas here but on his hand let's say and then just lower the opacity because that looks well pretty bad <laughs> that is not realistic so that's not what we're going to do we're going to use blend modes because as the as the as the name would suggest blend modes help us to sort of like help things to kind of blend into each other and they can add to them more realism and the one we're going to use for this lighting effect is color dodge but here's the thing about using color dodge what you don't do uh, is like we've done now we've painted in this bright color okay uh, and then we're going to use the the color dodge blend mode over in our uh, layers panel on the right hand side here. Because if we paint in with a bright color, this is what happens. It almost looks like he's got that, almost like he's on fire. Do you know what I mean? He's very, very bright. So when we paint with a bright color, which is what, which is what we actually think we might need, this is the result we get. So that's not what we do. Here's what we do. We're gonna add a blank layer. And when we use the color dodge blend mode, the color we need to paint in bizarrely has to be quite dark. So we want this nice yellow kind of glow color from this lamp, but we need to choose something in our color picker that is, it's almost brown. It's taking it well away from the yellow and making it like a darkish, creamy kind of brown color. And we'll click OK. So now let's paint it in. I'm gonna paint it in on his leg here because the light's gonna be hitting that part of his leg and a bit on this part of the carriage, on his shoe, a bit over here, and on his hands. And obviously when we do this, we can take our time. This is just to show you the kind of thing that you have to do when you are painting on these light sources. So we'll just do that for now. Um, let's put a little bit on the carriage as well because there'll be a little bit of light spill hitting the actual carriage. Something like that's fine. And then we use the Color Dodge Blend Mode like so. And you can see straight away how much more realistic that is. I absolutely love this. So we can turn that on and off. And rather than before we have this bright light coming and there's like nothing really hitting him, now we can start to see where that light would, almost like it naturally would be hitting him. And we can then, once we've changed it to the color dodge blend mode, we can then start painting in. Now, I'm not gonna paint it 100% with this brush on his face because the further away obviously is, it's gonna sort of fade off a little bit. So I'm gonna bring the brush down to maybe 50% and add just a little bit of that light onto his face as well. Something like that. That'll do like that. 
And then obviously this guy here might get some, so I'll probably take it down to about 40% and paint some so we can say that the light's just managing to hit him on the other side of the carriage as well. So that's the kind of thing we can do with the lamp source there, the lamp light hitting these people. But when it comes to the floor, it's exactly the same process. So I generally will paint the light hitting the people on one layer, and then when it's hitting the floor, I'll paint it onto another layer. So let's add another blank layer, and we'll get our brush. I'm gonna make it nice and brush, and it's a 0% hardness, so it's a really soft brush, and I'm just gonna paint it in the areas on the floor just around here. Something like that's fine for now. We don't have to worry too much about how it's looking at the minute because we can finesse that in a short while. And then we'll change the blend mode to color dodge. And then we can use the opacity to see the strength that we want it. But we can also come in with a mask and paint it away. Now, to me, it doesn't kind of look punchy enough. The color doesn't look kind of strong enough. So all we can do there is just duplicate this layer we've painted it on. So I can either drag it to the new layer icon at the bottom of my layers panel, or just press Command and Control J. So it brightens it all up. Now, that's too much. So I'm gonna put both of those layers into a group, like so. So we put them both into a group there, and use the fly out menu at the top of the layers panel, new group from layers, and we'll call that light source, or actually light on floor. Let's go for a really long layer name. And then we can start thinking about maybe adding a layer mask and painting in black with a nice big brush and just removing it off certain areas like so. And because obviously it's in a group, we also then have a pasty available to us as well. So that's just one quick way to show you how you can add in light sources, or not necessarily light sources, but the reflections and the light spill that you would get off your light sources in your pictures. And then in the final picture, this is basically just sort of darken the edges down and add a few more color effects. But like I say, that's all in the tutorial. It comes out in Practical Photoshop magazine. I believe that's gonna be out in around about March this year. So um, that's all for now. I'll see you next time.